Hello! This is the seventh video in my build log series for my VR shoe. In this video, I'm going to be going over design changes. My results from hooking up a battery to the VR shoe and running it for 10 minutes, three times. I'll be talking about the new ball transfers I got and how much quieter they are than the ones I'm using now. And I'll be showing the progress I've made so far on printing out all of the pieces for the new design. The first thing I'll go over is the testing I did with a battery. So here's a video I took of me performing the test. Here I am awkwardly walking over to the laptop. You can see the battery is powering the shoe. I'm hooking the speed controls up to the computer so I can control the motors. And then here I'm taking the charger that I used to charge the battery and it can also be used to measure the voltage that the battery is currently at. So I'm measuring the voltage that the battery's at and um, additionally the voltage of each of the cells in the battery. The battery has three cells and it's five amp hours. Okay, so I measured that and I wrote that down as the initial voltage. And then I did this for 10 minutes where I walked like this and Every time the shoe comes back, I activated the motor. So I bring my foot forward, motor's not on. Then as it comes back, the motor's on. And I did, like I said, I did this for 10 minutes. And then I measured the voltage to see how much it drained the battery. Before I share the results, you can see that the binding is flexing a bit like it did before. It started flexing a bit a few minutes after I did this test. In the prior videos, I just tested it for under a minute. And um, I updated my design again to hopefully solve this problem for the last time. You will see that update in a minute here. Now for the results. I did three 10 minute periods, but I threw the first one out because the binding came detached from my foot and I had to retach it and take a little bit of time to do that. So I just threw that test out. This is the voltage at the beginning of my second test. This is the voltage at the end of my second test. And then I went immediately and did the third test. So you can see the, the three cells, uh, the, the, this, these are the voltages of each individual cell. And for the first cell in the first test, it went down 0 0.01 volts, same for the second cell, and then same for the third cell. So overall, it went down 0 0.03 volts. And then uh, similarly for the second test, about 0 0.03 volts. So it used it, uh, this thing ended up using a lot less power than I thought it would, much, much less power. And I was I wondered why. And the only thing that I can think of is that Every time I bring my foot forward, it recharges the battery a little bit. I didn't think it would recharge the battery as much as it apparently is. I thought it would be very small, a very small amount of recharge, but it turns out it's a lot more than I thought. So um, to explain that a little, maybe a little better, every time my foot comes forward like this, it's turning the wheel. The wheel. So I bring my foot forward, the motor is not powered on, so the wheel is turning the motor and the motor is acting as a generator and it's recharging the battery. So in essence, I'm taking a step forward and recharging the battery and then discharging the battery to bring my foot back and then recharging the battery and then discharging the battery and then recharging the battery. So the net power consumption is actually a lot less than I thought. It's very small. That is what I think is going on. And so, with, with these results, I calculated how long the battery would actually last. Now, each cell, when it's fully charged, is 4.2 volts. So if I do 4.2 volts, and you can discharge a LiPo cell down to about 3 volts and not destroy the battery. You should never discharge a LiPo cell below 3 volts, otherwise you will kill the battery. So you have about 1.2 volt, uh, usable volts from max charge until you need to recharge it. So 
if I divide that by the 0 0.03 volts it used, we get 40. So in essence, it can um, this battery can last 40 10 minute periods. So if I just uh, multiply that by 10, it can last 400 minutes. And then if I divide that by 60, it can last over six hours. That's way longer than I expected. I would have been happy with two hours. So um, let me know if I did my math wrong here, but I, I think it's correct. So I really probably don't need a battery this big to operate the shoe. Could use a battery uh, a third of the size and it would be okay. So I might in the future just end up using a smaller battery, but uh, we'll see. I'll keep using this battery since I have it. Okay, so those are the results from the battery test. And uh, really quick, I realized I left out some important information. I weigh 170 pounds, so take that into consideration for how long it takes to discharge the battery. And I might have mentioned this, but the battery is 5 amp hours. The next thing I'll go over are the changes I made to the design. Here's the updated design, as you can see. And you'll, you'll, no, you'll notice that there are a few things that are different. So the binding is different. The front of it, I expanded it a little bit because my foot does not uh, fit perfectly into the binding. Now with more space here, it will. There was space to um, move this back a bit. So you can see there's this angle here. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. And it allowed me room to make the binding a little bigger in the front. So it should fit any person's foot much better. And you see in the back of the binding, before there was only one bracket here, I have two here. And I think that will help with that flex problem that I keep having with the binding. If there's two here, it should not flex anymore. So made that change. Then another change I made, if this will load, there we go. I I'm using different ball transfers. These two right here and here are ball transfers that I'll 3D print and make myself. These three ball transfers here are ones I'm buying. I am getting them from thecomaster.com and they, they should be very good. They use nylon balls, so they should be much quieter than the ball transfers I'm using now. The ball transfers I'm using now use steel balls and they are very loud in my opinion, at least. These are much quieter. I have a comparison video that I will show in a minute here, but I am using three of these. Each one of these is rated for 120 pounds. So three of them should be able to handle the majority of people. So this ball transfer is the one that I've been using. It has a metal ball. The ones I ordered are these that have nylon balls. These are loud. About that loud. These they're much quieter. I also, as you can see, I redid the paneling that covers all of the, most of the mechanical parts. I updated it. I hope it looks a little cooler. Uh, let me know what you guys think. So I, I covered this part up. I covered the, the rods that the leg attachment part here um, is attached to. And if I hide a few of the panels, actually I'll hide all of the panels and design spark is being slow. Okay, now the panels are not being shown. You can see the insides of the shoe. I made a few changes here. This is an Arduino that I am going to use to control the shoe. There's room over here for a Wi-Fi chip and an accelerometer, which I am also gonna to use to control the shoe. So all of that is going to be contained in this little box here. 
on the side, these two uh, boxes here are where the speed controls will go. And they will be covered up um, nicely by this box here. And then here are where two batteries could go. Like I said, I probably don't need two batteries and I could get smaller batteries. So maybe I'll redesign this to be smaller since I don't really need this much room. And those are the changes I made to the current design. I also did a little bit of experimenting. I have another file that has my design for my Omni wheels. The one on the left is the one that I'm currently using in the shoe. The one on the right is using smaller bearings. I did some Googling and found that I could actually get smaller bearings for a reasonable price. I can get 80 of these smaller bearings for about $40, which I think is a very, very reasonable price. So I decided to see how much smaller the Omni wheel could be if I used those smaller bearings, and this is how much smaller it could be. I put it into the um, total design for the shoe, and I figured I could uh, lower the shoe by about an inch. Where on the big box side, I could maybe lower it by about an inch and make the big box a little um, narrower, um, shrink it up a little bit. But I would have had to just tweak a lot of things with the current design. So I'm not going to do that now. I will probably eventually do it because in my opinion, this box is really big and I would like to shrink it down. So eventually I am going to use that smaller Omni wheel. I'm going to try it out but I'm also going to try out smaller motors. And if I can get smaller motors to work, then I can shrink it even further. I'll try smaller speed controls and smaller batteries. And I might think of other ways to shrink it down. I'm going to do all of that after I get something actually working, um, after I get this shoe functional. And I mean really functional where I have two of them and I can actually walk. Um, normally with this thing, wearing a safety harness, of course, and maybe even um, start playing games with it. At that point, once I know it's fully working, I will work on optimizing it and making it smaller. But I thought you guys might be interested that um, in hearing that this is also one of the things that I did this last week. So before I end this video, next week I will be putting together the shoe with the new design. So as you can see here, I am currently 3D printing the parts for the new design. I have almost all of them done. And many of them, you can see, I don't have the horizontal layers um, on while they're printing. So it shows the mesh, uh, the grid pattern, the infill, as, um, and it makes the parts lighter. And I think it also makes the parts look cooler. I hope it makes the, the shoe overall look cooler. It increases airflow. And um, this is very easy to do in any slicer for a 3D printer. In case you're wondering, you, you can set the horizontal layers, how many of them you want on the part. Here, you just set them to zero. You can also do different things like set the vertical layers to zero, play with the infill, all sorts of things. So I have almost all the parts done. I am going to put it together and next week we will see the shoe with the new design in real life. We'll see how much um, less it weighs because it should weigh a lot less with these 3D printed parts than it does now with all the wooden parts. Okay, and I'll do a little bit of testing with it to make sure everything holds up. All of these pieces, none of them have to be strong. They're just the paneling. None of them support the wheel or the motor or anything like that. They're just to cover everything up and hopefully to make the shoe look a little cooler. Okay, after testing the shoe with the new design, I uh, will decide what to do after that. I need to think about if the if it will be time to start doing some programming with the Arduino and accelerometer and a Wi-Fi chip, or if I should order the parts that I need to make a second shoe and then wait to do the programming until I have two shoes. Because the algorithm that I'm gonna use to turn the shoes on and off and determine the speed that they will go at and the direction they go at uh, the algorithm really needs both shoes. I can't really program and test. Well, I could program the algorithm, but I can't test the algorithm without two shoes. So I'm going to think about all that and decide what to do next. And that's it.
So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.